Hello, greetings in Jesus' name. This video is for you sisters out there who have emailed me and maybe those who haven't. Um, the ones I want to address are the ones who I get the most from are the ones new to the head covering. When I say head covering, I mean the Christian head covering as addressed in 1 Corinthians 11, 1 through 16. I'm not going to go into the detail of uh, whether or not a person should cover, but suffice it to say, I do believe in doing so. Um, I think the scriptures certainly indicate that. If you're not real sure about that, off the top of my head, there's a website, I think it's called kinghouse.org, that goes over it in a really good detail. Um, but go over that and pray about it. And for those of you who already are thinking about covering, this video is for you. I wanted to talk about a few things. First, seek God and pray. Don't just go into it flippantly because it's something that you don't want to attack in that way. It's far too important and symbolic. And I know that my faith has deepened a lot. I'm not for a second saying that the head covering saves you or is this magical talisman or anything awful like that. All I'm saying is there is a peace in obeying God. And one thing God told me when I very first started praying about this myself was you can obey me in this simple thing. And it is a simple thing. It didn't feel like it at all, but it is. And there is a big peace in that. And no, in any, that, it's something you have to work out for yourself, but the big thing I wanted to point out is don't go at it just casually. Seek Him and pray before you do it, and make sure your heart's right. It's very, very important. I think if you have a very poor attitude that you know, you're doing it because you want to be rebellious or you know, who, who knows why sometimes we do what we do, but I think I've seen a few people who kind of do it with a rebellious attitude. That shows through, and it makes for a very poor witness, so you really, really, really must seek God and do it with a meek and quiet spirit. And that kind of falls into the next thing, is ask your husband's permission, or if you're unmarried, ask your father's permission whoever your earthly authority is that God's established for you. If you haven't really settled the issue of submission within your marriage, you really need to. Not saying that you need to have that down perfectly before you start head covering, but you really need to understand the concept because that's the very thing that head covering symbolizes. The scripture says that we are to submit to our husbands, and you really need to do that. It's just... It makes a huge difference in your marriage if two people aren't vying and fighting for that authority. And I know a lot of people will say I'm crazy for that, but it's very, very important. And it's the thing your head covering represents. If you go to your husband and seek him, ask his permission to do this, it'll go a lot better for you than just trying to usurp authority and tell him to do it, or that you want to do it. Um, some women are in the position of their husband tells them no. I personally don't advocate that you disobey. I know some people do because they say obey God rather than man, which is certainly true in most situations. But this one is kind of the proverbial catch-22. And I probably shouldn't use that phrase, but um, you need to seek and pray to God because... He can change your husband's heart. He may not immediately, though. You may have some time. You need to be prepared to be patient, but you need to accept his authority and decision. The reason why I say that I don't advocate that you disobey is because I think it goes against the heart of the scripture. Why disobey on a symbolism that says that you are obeying? It just, it, to me, that's an oxymoron. You don't want to do that, but. Seek God and pray. He will guide you what to do, but I strongly urge that you ask your husband or your dad's permission if you're unmarried, your dad. Um, I know it's probably harder in some cases for those young girls who aren't married because some people say that it's only a married woman's 
thing to wear the head covering. I really don't think so myself. I think it's for girls too. But seek and pray. Um, avoid backsliding. Um, again, not that the head covering sa saves you, so don't take that term into that context. I just mean, once you put it on, don't take it off because it makes for such a confusing witness and you don't want to do that. Believe me, I know I've done it. I've done it twice. I started covering back in, I think, 01. And I've done it two different times for a couple months or so each time. And I'm not real happy with myself and the person I became when I did it. But believe me, the conviction was strong to recover. And thank goodness I did obey. And there is a big piece in that obedience. But try to avoid that mistake. When you put it on, expect that there's going to be the persecution. Expect that some family is just not going to like it. Expect that it's going to be hard. You need to be separate from the world. And that's not an easy thing to do. I don't think anybody would tell you that it is. But put it on and expect trouble. Just do your best. That's the only thing I can tell you. You know, we're not perfect. I'm not perfect. But I just kind of wanted to give people a heads up on that. Another thing that you can do, and it is very, very important, is seek fellowship. If you don't have that around you in a local church, um, Mennonite churches are a great place for that. Um, a lot of them do cover. Not all of them. There are some who don't. But a lot of them do. And that has been a big blessing to me having face-to-face -face people who have some of the same things that I do. But the other thing that's helped me get through a lot of years is the internet. There's a lot of sisters out there who, like me, who weren't raised with a head covering. And it can be really hard because families will go against you and everything. Thank God mine didn't. My family has been very kind and loving to me. But some ladies aren't so blessed. So you need to have some kind of support or you're going to feel very, very alone. And there are a lot of ladies out there willing to help you and support you. Yahoo groups will, um, if you go out there and search Christian and Heck Covering, you'll find quite a few of them. Join you a couple. Maybe join you five or six until you find what ones that are the best fit for you. But get you some fellowship one way or the other. It's going to be really hard. Uh, the last thing I want to say is enjoy the peace of obedience. It is huge. Um, believe me, the heli covering doesn't make it perfect or anything in that regard, but it is something that's kind of a black and white issue. You can obey or not. And I know for me, obeying in something like this really made a big difference in my walk. Um, I'm not sure why God led it to be that way, but it has. And, you know, your path may be a little different. It may be a very, very minor thing, and it may be one of the hugest things you've ever done. I don't know. We're all different. God teaches us all differently. But I know for me there's been a big piece in that obedience, and it's brought other things, uh, more blessing and contentment in my marriage and things like that. So I hope the same for you, and I pray that it's not a, as hard as it might be. But... Uh, if you guys have any questions, feel free to email me, and I'll do my best to get back to you. Know that um, everybody who sent me emails, I've been praying for them as you know, much as possible. And, you know, I know it's hard, but know that you're not alone. Have a very blessed day.